First thing you're going to do is hook up your siren to your vehicle. Right here I have the cover completely removed from the siren so you can see the inner workings. Uh, I also have it hooked up as a bench top set up with some push buttons and a power supply that runs off 120 volts but yours would be running directly off of your car battery. And this would be all your traffic director connections, all your light output connections, your main power input, and all your siren and logic inputs and outputs, as well as enables. And then the connector to your control head. First, pop your CD into your drive and press next to install all the features. At this point, take the USB dongle that came with your system and plug it into a USB port on your computer. As soon as you have your software installed and your USB connector plugged into your computer, you can take this connector and plug it into the mating connector on the amplifier. Next, you can take and switch the dip switch using a pen or a small screwdriver. Right here, it says programming mode disable. <coughs> So you're going to take this dip switch and push it up towards the top here. Then I'll take it out of normal siren mode and put it into the computer programming mode. Then you'll go to your computer, click connect. As you can see there's all kinds of different buttons on here and you can program them all to work as you'd like them to work. Any of the push buttons, the manual, the horn, slide switch, and there's a button here over here for other settings, some different settings that didn't go directly with the other buttons, such as if you want the siren to beep every 10 seconds when a light's active, which is kind of useful if you've got an LED bar that doesn't make any noise and you want to know if something's on during the day. If you're unsure of what the settings mean or what they do, click the info button. I'll zoom out here. <clears throat> a PDF will pop up according to whatever button you're on. We were on other settings, so it popped up other settings. And then each one of the things, say backlight dimmer, pops up here. And what does backlight dimmer do? The three different options. Always bright, selected by the positive input, selected by the negative input, and the same thing for the other options that are on the screen. And it gives you a brief wiring diagram. There's a complete wiring diagram, of course, included in the main manual, which if you want to hit the main manual up and you've lost it, you click the button that says manual, and your entire manual electronic. When you first open up the program, it's going to be set for the default settings, just like the siren came from the factory. And we'll try to change one of the settings here. By default, position 3 on the slide switch normally turns on the whale. So let's change this so that position 2 turns on whale, and position 3 turns on phaser. Then let's go up here, and we're going to save the settings we just changed. We're going to call it settings for all cars. Press save. Note up here that it says what the file is saved as. Next, we're going to export those changes to the siren. And then we can try out our settings by disabling the program mode dip switch here. So now we're in standard siren mode. One does nothing, two turns on whale, three turns on phaser. Put ourselves back into program mode. 
What we can also do here is, I'm going to close this program, open up again, so it's set. Just like if you had restarted the computer, come back to it. And you'll notice that everything is back to the way it was. We've got none, none, and whale. So let's say that uh, the computer that had the file on it crashed, lost the information. You want to import that information back in here. So what we're going to do is press import. It's going to upload the settings from the siren. You'll note that it changed the settings down here, whale and phaser. And it would do the same thing if you had a whole bunch of settings as well. Down here. Um, you need to switch some of the dip switches. An uh, example of that would be the traffic director. If I want to change the traffic director so that it does not exist on this unit and that the unit just has an extra button to control any 20 amp output, so I'll disable this button here from being traffic director by selecting output only. I'll zoom in here and you'll see that the bottom of the display now tells me that I need to change one of the dip switches to account for that. If I was to try to export to the siren without changing that, and it'll give me an error message, or warning really, telling me to check the dip switch 3 is correct. Let's click OK. So I'm going to go in here, count one, two, three, which is labeled here what it is, traffic director mode. Change that over. In about a second or two, the bottom screen there clears of that warning message, and you're all set to go. I think the most uh, option settings in the Siren are pretty self-explanatory, or at least you could figure out pretty easily by looking at the instructions. Some of the more tricky ones I'll just go through real quick. The um, enables siren with any other which is available on the slide switch and the push buttons. What that does is if you didn't want your siren to turn on unless for example you were in position one or above or maybe two or above of the slide switch I can check those two boxes and now if I'm in position one or off on the slide switch then these siren buttons won't activate, so you can't accidentally hit a siren button to make sound when you don't want it to. Um, similarly, with the if you just if you disable those checkboxes, then it goes so that its siren is always activated. Similarly, with the horn ring transfer button or HRT, you can have it so that normally the horn ring transfer turns on whenever the siren's on. Or maybe you don't. You want to be able to use your vehicle's horn when your slide switch, switch position is less than one or two or maybe three for pursuit. So let's say two, three, and one. So whenever my slide switch, switch is off and I hit my vehicle's horn, I'm just going to get a normal horn. And then when I go to one, two, or three, I'm going to get the air horn. So let's just program that real quick and we'll see what that does. program mode. So now I've got a little simulator here. So this simulates my vehicle's horn and this little LED here simulates the vehicle's built-in factory horn. This is the horn button on the vehicle. So position zero, it'd be going uh, uh, like a normal vehicle would. Put it in position one. If you hear that is the siren tone. You also notice that under traffic director you can select the discrete which would be dummy traffic director that has six or eight heads 
and the flasher would be internal to the siren. Or multiple logic traffic directors which use which have the smarts inside of them and then just use enable wires to turn them on. And then if you have a logic control, then you can either choose 12 volts or ground as their enable method. Gunlock password. And to enable that, you just select any of the boxes that say gunlock password, which is available on PB1 through 5. And how this is going to work is when this push button 14 is selected as a gunlock timer, which it is by default, I'm going to select the buttons that I want to be read to be my password. So if I do PB1, PB3, in PB5 is checked in 4 and 2 or not. Okay, now that I have that programmed in there, I can hit the button. It asks me for a password by flashing. I'll enter my password I just programmed. It unlocks the gun lock. It'll turn off after it times out, or I can turn it off manually. If I enter the wrong password, or no password at all, it's going to tell me that's wrong. Error out.